Okay, in this video I want to talk about reduction of order. And the idea is reduction of order can be used to find a fundamental set of solutions of the homogeneous equation y double prime plus p times y prime plus q times y equals zero, given one solution y sub one. Okay, so the basic idea is what we can do is if we're given a solution, we can basically turn our differential equation into a first order homogeneous linear differential equation. And we have techniques then to solve those. Okay, we can either use separation or integrating factors. Okay, so a couple things I want to emphasize here. Um, so in this video, I'm not going to actually do any concrete examples. Just consider this a proof or a justification or um, whatever you want to call it that, uh, that says, hey, we are in fact allowed to do this. Okay, so just a little notation here. First off, I've got P, Q, and Y. Again, P of X and Q of X, those are, those are just going to be functions of X. And likewise, we know a solution, Y sub 1, and again, just to emphasize that it's also a function of x. So again, these are all known functions of x. But when I do my notation, I'm just going to use, you know, p, q, and y sub 1. I'm not going to put the x's in there. But it's just something to keep in mind, because we'll touch on that a little bit later. Um, the bad news, uh, okay, so here's the bad news. So we say, hey, if we've got one solution, we can use this reduction of order to go about finding the other one. The bad news is there's no general methods to find that first solution. So um, that's kind of one of the caveats here. But again, depending on the type of uh, differential equation, there are certainly some techniques that we can use. Okay, so so uh, that's kind of the good and the bad. You know, maybe finding that initial one it might be a bit problematic, but once you got one, you can find the other one uh, without too much without too much difficulty. Okay, so so let's start off here. So we assume that y1 is a solution. So if it's a solution, that tells us simply that y1 double prime plus p of x times uh, y sub 1 prime plus q of x times y sub 1, that equals 0. Okay, so that's what we're given. Okay, so I shouldn't use an arrow, but I'm going to use an arrow. I don't mean an implication here. Uh, just, just that's what's given, okay? Um, so we're given that. We're assuming that we have a solution. So what we do is, the trick is we look for solutions. We look for solutions of the form. Okay, so our new solution, um, I'll call it just uh, y equals v times y sub 1. And again, v is also going to be, uh, it's going to be a function of x, but it's an unknown function of x. Okay, so this is an unknown function of x, and that's the goal. We're trying to find, we already know that y sub 1 is some function of x. Hey, if we multiply it by some other unknown function of x, that's going to be our other solution. So this is kind of the, the magic. Okay, so, so why does it work that if we, uh, we can take our original solution and multiply it by some other function? Why does it turn out that this is going to give us a solution? Well, let's just grind through it here real quick. And I'm going to come back to, I will use this little result uh, here in a moment. That's why I wrote it down. Okay, well, the basic idea is let's just substitute it in. Okay, so I'm going to substitute in this uh, y equals v times y sub 1. And let's just see what happens. Okay, so if we look at our original differential equation, if we look at our original differential equation, um, instead of y double prime, well, we'll have v times y sub 1 double prime. And instead of p of x, I'm just going to write p times uh, y prime, which is going to be v times y sub 1 prime, plus q times y, which again is v times y sub 1. So uh, don't get drowned out here by all the, the v's and the primes and the y sub 1's and all that stuff. but 
So all we're going to do simply is just expand this out, just basically using you know the product rule. That's all we're doing here. So we're going to use the product rule. We're going to expand, and we're going to regroup. That's going to be sort of the first the first few things that we're going to do. So because uh, again, uh, hopefully you should be able to take a second derivative of this stuff without too much trouble. But let me just do it real quick anyway. So vy double prime. Well, that says take a derivative twice. So when we do the first derivative, well, we'll have to use the product rule. So I'm going to leave the v alone. I'll take the derivative of the y sub 1 part plus, and now I'll take the derivative of v, and I'll leave the y sub 1 part alone. And again, I've got to take one more derivative. So again, these are, just to emphasize one more time, these are uh, unknown functions of x. So we can't really say what they are. All we can really do notation-wise is just stick our primes on there. So that's all I'm doing. All right, so if we use uh, the product rule, well, I was going to say one more time, but we're doing it on each part. So I've got to take, I've got to use the product rule on my first term, and again, the product rule on the second term. So if we use the product rule on the first term, I'll have uh, v times y sub 1 double prime if I take the derivative of my second factor plus v prime times y sub 1 prime. So there's the derivative of the first term. Plus, and now if we take the derivative of the second term, we'll have v sub 1 times y sub 1 prime, plus I'll have v double prime times y sub 1. OK, so now I've taken two derivatives. So again, um, if we substitute in, or well, excuse me, uh, well, yes, we're substituting. If we expand this, whatever you want to call it. So if we expand this, we're going to have, let me see if I can make sure I fit it all in here. We'll have v times y sub 1 double prime plus v prime times y sub 1 prime. Um, and I guess, uh, I guess we could even combine these, right? I've got v sub 1, I've got v prime times y sub 1 prime plus another one of those. So let me even uh, put in there that we have two of those. And I'll make that look a little prettier here in uh, uh, the next step. Plus v double prime times y sub 1. So that's just the first, uh, the first part expanded out. Plus p times, again, well, you'd have to use the product rule here. So v times y sub 1 prime plus v prime times y sub 1 plus q times v times y sub 1. And again, that equals 0. OK, so I'm just expanding this out. OK, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a little regrouping. So a little regrouping. So let's see, we've got y sub 1 times v double prime. Where was that one at? Uh, OK, so y sub 1 times v double prime. That takes care of that portion. And let's see, then I'm going to factor out uh, my, uh, my terms involving v prime. So you can check what I have. I've got 2 times y sub 1 prime plus p times y sub 1 times v prime. Let's see, where, where do those come from? So if I factor out a v prime, if I factor out the v prime, there's my 2 y sub 1 prime. And then I've also got this term p times, uh, p times v prime times y1. So that kind of takes care of that term. And then everything simply involving v. Okay, so everything involving v, if I factor that out, I've got y1 double prime plus p times y sub 1 prime plus q times y sub 1 multiplied by v equals 0. Okay, so I'm just now taking care of all the terms that have a v included. So we've got that term, we've got that term, and we've got our very last term as well. OK, so I'm just regrouping. So now, though, uh, again, by assumption, by assumption, we know that all of this portion simply equals 0, because we're, again, we're assuming, this is what I boxed in at the very beginning, um, we're assuming that y sub 1 is a solution to that differential equation, which means, hey, it does all, in fact, equal 0. So what are we left with? Well. 
So that means we're now left with y sub 1 times v double prime, again plus 2 y sub 1 prime, plus p times y sub 1 times v prime equals 0. So now we're almost in business, okay? We're almost in business. Again, these are all just um, um, unknown, uh, well, excuse me, y sub 1 is a known function of x. The, uh, the v's, though, um, Again, v, so therefore v prime, therefore v double prime. Those are our unknown functions of x. Okay, so let's see here. So, so at this point, what we can do is we can simply uh, just do sort of a little substitution. We can create a, a new, uh, we can just relabel. So we can let w equal our v prime. And if we do that, what we get now is we get that we have y sub 1 times, uh, so okay, so w prime would be v double prime, right? So if that's true, we've got that w prime equals v double prime. I guess I should have implications both ways, right? But uh, who cares? So, um, and I even already put too many in there. So what we get is that y sub 1 times v double prime, which is w prime, and then we have our two y sub 1 prime plus p times y sub 1 times w equals 0. So that's what we have now. And this is now the key observation. This is the thing, this is the thing to notice. So again, um, y sub 1 along with all of this stuff, these are known functions of x. So since these are known functions of x, what do we have? Well, what do we have now? That means we now have, it says we now have a first order, it says we now have a first order homogeneous, we now have a first order homogeneous linear differential equation. And we can solve these. We can solve by either using um, separation. We can separate and integrate. Or we can use uh, integrating factors. So that's basically the justification that, in fact, this method will work. Okay? It says if we, if we, if we look for solutions of the form v times our known solution. Again, some unknown function of x multiplied by our uh, known solution that's a function of x. It says, if we look for solutions of that form, it says, hey, in fact, and this is the point, this is the, uh, this is why we call it a reduction of order. Uh, we've, because now we've got, we went from a second order differential equation down to a first order differential equation. So, and again, you're not done at this point, but this is the basic idea. So in my next video, um, what I'll do is I'll actually do a concrete example to show you how this works.